Hey guys, welcome to this review. So this is about number lines, interval notation, and set notation. Oh my. Um, so we're going to be looking at things that look like this. Um, these are the types of notation. So if you just need to brush up, this is a great video to watch. As a reminder, um, always pause the video to try the examples um, when you are prompted, and there are free guided notes available. So where I want to start is just kind of using this example. So we're going to use x is greater than 4 um, to kind of re refresh all of this. So the things I want to tell you, so first things first. So for the number lines, there are special notations. So let's start there. Um, so first of all, we have either the open circle or the round brackets. So this is for either greater than or less than signs versus a closed dot or a square bracket. So this is for greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. So um, different books use different things, so it, it doesn't matter which one you like to use. I'm kind of partial to using the brackets and the, the square brackets and the rounded brackets, um, but these literally mean the same thing. So it's it's not like it's wrong if you use one or the other. It's just it's just notation. So when you're doing something like a number line, so if I want to do this for x is greater than four. So what you want to do is you want to have your number line and sometimes it might be helpful to actually write out some numbers on the number line just to help uh, kind of position yourself. So I have x is greater than 4, so what is actually greater than 4? So this direction, 5 and, and so on, all of this side is greater than 4. So then what you want to do is you really want to kind of shade to on that side that makes sense for the inequality. And then you can use um, the appropriate sign. So this is a greater than sign, which means that I'm going to use one of these symbols. Now, if you decide to use um, the rounded brackets, then you just want to have your round bracket kind of opening that way. Uh, if you want to use the open circle, like I said, it really doesn't matter. Um, so then it would just look like that, and then you'd have the four. So that's the first one, so number line notation. OK, so the next is interval notation. So let's just review some of the signs here. So for interval notation, so we use round brackets. So this is for less than, greater than, and either positive or negative infinity. Versus we use square, square brackets for less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Okay, so building off of our, our example of x is greater than 4, so I have the number line up here. I think a lot of times it's easier to kind of do this if you have a number line in front of you. Um, so interval notation is kind of like reading a book from left to right. So it's all about saying where do you stop or the, the where do you start and where do you end. So as I'm scanning from left to right, I see that I'm starting here at four. So that would be where I start. And then this direction this way, this is the positive infinity direction versus this direction is the negative infinity direction. So if you're having positive infinity, you don't need the plus sign in front of it, for, but for negative infinity, you do. So here, I've gone from four, and since I've gone off this way, this is just gonna be now from four to infinity. So there's kind of the basic structure. So now I have to figure out what signs do I put around this? Well, I used a greater than, so uh, th that would mean that four is not included. So the way I always think about this is that this means that 4 is not strictly included. So I use the round bracket here, and then infinity always gets the round bracket. So there's that. Then next, we have set notation. So set notation has a very particular format. It always looks like this. So I have this bracket, x, I have this bar, and then I have kind of whatever the solution is. So this is kind of whatever your solution is here. Um, so this would be your, your inequality type solution, I guess. So this is the only part that will really change. The rest of this is the same. So this one's pretty simple, I think, um, because it's just going to be this x. And then you just slide in that x is greater than 4, and then that's it. And so this stands for all x's such that x is greater than 4. That's the general format. OK. So if you're rusty on this, I would highly recommend you pause the video and try these examples. These are all pretty standard ways that you might have to either come up with the number line, interval notation, or set notations. So maybe I should just note that. So you want to write this the, the number line. Um, then you want to do the interval notation. And then you also want to do the um, set notation for all of these. So go ahead and hit pause, do what you can, and then hit play when you're ready.
So starting here, so we'll start with the number line. So my number line, so I've got my five. So where do I go greater? Do, is that to the left or to the right? Well, that would be to the right. And so then for this one, so you can use either a square bracket or a closed circle, whichever, it doesn't matter. Now, building off of this, so once again, using my um, interval notation, so reading a book from left to right, nothing, 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 and then I start here at five. So I start at five, and then I go off into the positive infinity direction. Now, this time five is included, so I use a square bracket, but infinity always gets the round bracket. Finally, the set notation, so it's just going to look like this, and that would be it. Um, and so it really just depends on what your, your teacher or your book is asking for um, as to which one of these you have to use. All three are valid. So for this next one, so here's my number line coming at you. So I've got negative 2.5. Um, I could use a open circle here if I wanted. And then where is this less than? That would be this direction. Okay. Um, alternatively, you could have used a round bracket. It would have gone that way. So now for my um, interval notation, so again, I'm reading a book from left to right. So this time, I've, this side is shaded, right? So I pick up here. So this is actually starting at negative infinity and then goes up to negative 2.5. And they both get round brackets. Um, infinity always gets the round. Negative 2.5 is not actually included. It's got the less than symbol. And then here's your set notation, just like that. OK. so. Problems that look like this, so it's kind of important you know what this actually means. The way to think about this is that x is between negative 4 and 7. So if you know how to read this just normally, it kind of makes a lot of sense what you need to do. Um, so I will take my number line, and so here's negative 4, and here's 7. And so I just want to shade everything in between, right? That's what I said it means. Um, so now I just need to put the proper signs on. So this would be a square bracket because it's a less that less than or equal to, while this would be a round bracket because it would be a less than. Or again, you could use a closed dot and an open dot, whatever you want to do. Now, the interval notation for this is going to be, um, again, reading a book left to right. So now I have nothing, 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 and then I start at negative 4. And then I continue to 7. And I can use a square bracket here and a round bracket here. And this is actually why I like using these on the number line, because they, they transfer to interval notation. And then as far as your set notation goes, so again, it's always this format. OK. Now for this next one. So this is an or. So if you haven't uh, seen this before, or you maybe forgot about it, so you're going to mark um, so negative 5 and 4, of course, on your number line. So you're basically just putting both of these inequalities on the number line at the same time. That's what it means to be an or. It means put them both on the um, number line at the same time. So for x is greater than 4, I'm going to go this way. And I'm going to have a round bracket here, or an open circle, whatever you want. And then for x is less than negative 5, I'm going to go this way. And I'll use a uh, round bracket as well, or an open circle, whatever you want. Um, and so that's it. So you just have to put both inequalities on there at the same time. Now for the interval notation. So again, we just start at like we're reading a book from left to right. So in this case, I'm starting at negative infinity. And I go to negative 5. Both of those get a round bracket. And then. We need some way to indicate that we're going to make a jump. So we'll we'll come back to that in a second. I want to just kind of finish this. So I'm going to make some jump, and I'll have a symbol for that. Then I pick back up at 4, and I continue on to infinity. So the way now to indicate that you want to include both of these, that, that's really what we're saying, right? There's a jump, or there's like basically two different sets of interval notation that we need to connect. You use the union symbol, and, and that will connect it for you. Um, and then your set notation, so still the same thing. Um, you can just write the or in there, and that will be that. OK, so if those were a little rusty for you, or if you want to see more examples, 
I do have these so you can pause the video and try them. Otherwise, if you think you're good, then thanks for watching. Um, consider you consider maybe liking and subscribing. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing again. Number line, set notation, um, and interval notation, all that good stuff. So starting here. So here's my negative three and I will shade this way. And then I will put, um, how about I put a closed dot this time just for funsies or a square bracket, whichever one you used. So then my interval notation, so it starts at negative infinity and goes to negative three and gets a square bracket because negative three is included. And then my set notation is as shown. Um, it's a terrible three. Okay, so that's the first one. Moving on to the next one. So here's 12, where is, where are my X is greater than 12? Well, that would be this way. And so then I'll just use a round bracket or an open circle, whatever you used. So then my interval notation, I start at 12 and I go to infinity and infinity always gets the round bracket. And then I have my set notation. So there's all that. Okay, so we'll be on to C here. So remember, this is X falls between zero and eight. So if I just mark that on the number line, here's zero, here's eight. Oops, it's not the best looking eight. I have trouble making eights for some reason. I can make infinities better than I can make eights. Isn't that weird? Um, okay, so I shade everything in between and then I'll use a round bracket here and a square bracket here or an open circle and a closed circle, you do you. Um, and so now for my interval notation, so I start at zero and I go to eight, zero will get the round, eight will get the square bracket. All right, and then the set notation, I always think this is kind of like the, the most boring one out of them, but there you go. <laughs> and now for D, so again, you're gonna put both of these on the same number line at the same time. So here's three, here's one, okay. And so I'm gonna go this direction for X is greater than three. And then X is less than one will go this direction. And I'll once again, put this open bracket. Um, and then for my interval notations, so remember you read it as a book from left to right. So I start at negative infinity and I go to one and they both get round brackets. Then we talked about that you use the union sign to show that you're gonna continue this going from three to positive infinity. So that would be that. And then you've got your lovely set notation. So that is a quick review. So if that was helpful for you, please like this video, comment with any questions or feedback and subscribe and share this channel with your friends. And I will see you next time. Thanks guys.